the funny thing is, is that I have started, okay, so I'm also working on, like, a book of short, not, like, kind of novellas, kind of, sort of, I um, that all, describing it to me. I'm sorry? I remember you described it to me a little while back. Yeah, um, and it's, like, it's, like, each, like, like, a hundred years or so, like, it, it's, it's, it's hard to explain in a short period of time, but anyway, I'm working on the last one right now, and, like, I've always, for the past few months, I take, because my job is pretty chill, as long as I do my job, they pretty much let you do what you want to do, you know, as long as you keep control and you're, you're good to go. The thing is, is that I would take I think maybe an hour, like 10, 20 minutes to kind of, you know, eat breakfast, coffee, and then I would start writing. And that sort of has my brain going, which actually makes me perform better at my job, which is ah. really interesting. Yeah. Um, and it's like, especially in the early mornings because I'm waking up at four o'clock in the morning when I'm having like a six to two shift. Yeah. Waking up at four o'clock in the morning, I get coffee. We, I go to work and you know, it takes me like maybe 20, 30 minutes to kind of get into the zone. And I mean, sometimes if I get stuck, Hey, I'll reach out for help. But other than that, I'm just, it, it it's really weird because I, I noticed my brain is just clicking along and it's actually makes my job faster and it, the day goes by faster if I'm working on something as well as working my day job, you know? So I think it's really interesting that I'm, I'm still keeping the artistic part going, but I'm also keeping that day job sort of like my brain is still clicking and I'm not like bored to death <laughs> after a while. Yeah, no, and, so. and you know, I've heard different people have different uh, techniques and things like I, I recently met a lady um, who can't do her office work unless she has um, one of the news channels in the background, but with a very low volume, but still out of her peripheral vision, she can see the news. And she, she clearly explained to me that this is a thing that she does to focus on her job. And I thought, I thought that was really interesting because I could never freaking focus on, on, on work with like something else over here in my peripheral vision distracting me. Like I, See, I would be totally zoned out but if so I did that. It, it works <laughs> for her because I mean, that's, that's the way some people's brains work. And so yeah. you know, people's, people's brains work in different ways to find that balance. And I think that's so fascinating how Oh, yeah, there's totally. not a right way there's a wrong way there's I'm sorry I'm sorry there's not a right way or a wrong way there's the way that works for you in my opinion mm -hmm. um what do you say to all the people out there who you know get down on themselves about and especially you Rachel kudos kudos for for holding down a day job and doing the arts and striving to find that balance kudos to you um mm -hmm. to me to all of the people out there um the filmmakers, actors, actresses who are doing exactly that because maybe you have to have that day job to, you know, maintain a standard of living and pay bills and all that stuff. Um, kudos, kudos to all of us. I pat myself on the back a little bit right there. Um, <laughs> but what do you say to, you know, the, the, the ones who maybe struggle with finding that balance a little bit more than others who the, maybe the ones who get down on themselves and say like you know i just can't do it and blah 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 when really they should be seeing it as okay i'm, I'm just going to try something else or i'm just going to try something else or i'm just going to yeah. try this other one. um what i say to them is keep going keep trying yeah it's really difficult i mean i'm there god knows i'm there i've been there more than a couple times this week yeah but if you don't do what you're passionate about as well as you're, you, you know, make a living and everything, then you're not really going to find a joy in your life. It's just going to be like the same droll sort of rot routine. If you don't find time for your passions, you're not really living. So just keep trying to just 
just go, you know, don't, don't just be like, um, uh, what's the word? <laughs> a rat in the race. You, yeah. you know, I know that sounds a little strange, but like be an actual, like, just, just keep trying to figure out a way to balance your passions and, and your work life. And then that way things will seem less dark than they are, than they look like. Cause I mean, honestly, art can, art can be a bad thing not a bad thing. It can be dark, but it can also be light. There was a post that I had made and I'm going to get the general gist of it. I'm not sure if I'm going to get the entire thing, but bear with me. (laughs) Where there is art, there is life. Where there is life, there is hope. Mm. So, and that's that. that, It was a little bit longer than that, but that was the general gist. Where there is art, there is there is always something that can be found to guide you into doing whatever you need to do. If it may, even if you're not good at it, like with me, I, I'm making like a huge art project, right? And my painting skills as well as clay sculpture skills are minimal. But it gives me something to focus on. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you just find time for your passions, just just find time for your passions, even if it's a small amount of time, and just, just don't give up on it. I, and, let, you know, let, it, you'll, you'll find a way. Let mm-hmm. me, so let me, let me jump in right there because that's a perfect spot for me to then add on to exactly that, Rachel, because I think people have to remember that even when you do find your you know, your rhythm or your routine of doing things and whatnot. Um, there might be some other little tweak that you could make. And so there's always something more that could be altered. Like it's like editing a film, like, you know, right when you think you've got it down and then you look back on it a day or two or a year or five years later, you say, Oh man, I could have, you know, there's something else I could have tweaked. You know what I mean? So, so there's always going to be something more you could do, but for the most part, as long as you, as long as you find that general, that general rhythm and groove. And then here's the other part I want to talk about also. Um, When you find that groove or that rhythm as an artist, you know, just all all, all artists in general, I I think obviously the, the art aspect and element is there, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. like for example, with, with writing or with, you know, getting up and, you know, editing or whatever it is that you have to do, whatever stage of the game you're at. Mm -hmm. Some people wait for that inspiration to, to other people. It comes very easily. Um, but what I'm getting at is that you also do have to see it from a very, uh, methodical discipline, Mm -hmm. a discipline of, and I love the D word discipline because, Mm -hmm whether or not I'm feeling creative, I do force myself to sit down and, you know, work on a scene or bang out a scene. And so there is, there is very much a, um, I want to say a mechanical aspect to it that you have to also yes uh, admit has to be there because for example, uh, how do you think, you know, and, and not, not that I know personally, but like, I mean, how do we think that Stephen King pumps out? I was going to say Steven Spielberg. Stephen King, or also Steven Spielberg, too. How do we think these guys pump out their works? You know, mm-hmm. Stephen King's literature, Stephen, Steven Spielberg's movies. Like, these guys pump out regular works. Mm-hmm. Because I'm pretty sure, you know, beyond the glorification, beyond the accolades, beyond the fame, all of that is nice, I'm sure. But... Yeah. What I'm pretty sure we're not hearing about is the discipline to mm-hmm. make it a job and to sit down yes. and to dedicate yourself to the craft of improving and improving and working and getting to work, even when you may not want to get to work. A lot of people, yes. some people that, that, that I've known don't want to look at it that way. They want to, you know, be like, well, I'm not feeling inspired today. So I'm just going to hang out on Netflix. And no, no, no. no. <laughs> good luck with that because like, you know, when are you going to get inspired? Yeah. You know, you have yeah. to sit down and, and put in the work, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I, I absolutely agree. I, the thing is, is that with, it, it really is, as an artist, 
artistry in any form is a labor of love. Labor. Period. Yeah, it's a labor, keyword labor of labor. love. You love to do it. You love to, you know, create these worlds and these characters and everything. But you also, it, it is a labor. It is difficult sometimes to get yourself, okay, I don't feel inspired, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know, it's just, that's just the way it is. And you know what, when you put in that labor and you force yourself to sit down and, and bang out that scene on the screenplay or, you know, whatever, whatever it is you have to, whatever it is that you're forcing yourself to sit down and do, ironically enough, when you, when you, when you control your physiology to the point where you're sitting yourself down and saying, okay, me, we're going to sit down and we're going to do the work, right? Then the ideas start coming to you. Ah, yes. And then they, and then you're building on this one and then this one and you're tweaking and you're working and, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. you've been creative, but because yep, yep, you yep. put your, you made yourself do it. You made yourself put mm -hmm. in the work and then all of a sudden everything gets through. I, I like sort of pops into place. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to think of it like, you know, those, you know, those little mopeds that, uh, that people ride around town where you got to do some pedaling, but once you get going, you got going because you got pedaling in the first place. Mm -hmm. I know it's a stupid what's, what's funny that, about it uh -huh. is that for some reason, and I, I, I put a lot of historical content into the stories that I'm writing because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a historian, like an amateur, I wouldn't say amateur, hobbyist historian, as it were. The first two stories were really, really easy. The third one is more modern and more contemporary. I am having a very hard time. <laughs> <laughs> with even though I live that that life it's hard for me to put on paper yeah. but once I start going and once I get an idea of what's going on in my head onto the paper and I can see it then it's not as bad but I still manage to get stuck do you do you have any advice for anyone that is maybe going through that who is more who does more like historical stuff, like more in the past compared to like now? I, 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 I'm not sure if I'm phrasing that right, but yeah. Well, I think, I think a lot, a lot of our creating and our, and you know, in, in this case, you're talking about writing, correct? Huh? You're, you're talking about writing, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of times, here's, here's what I can say about that. A lot of times I, I, you know, as we all have heard, you got to write what you know, right? So if, if yeah. you have, if you have a painful love experience, you're probably going to write a painful love story. And, you, and it, if you can, you know, get it out on the page, then, you know, it's probably, there's probably going to be some pretty authentic substance to it. Mm 